Welcome to another week of It Would Seem As Though. I think we're in week 76. That's a lot. Is that right? I don't 76? know. 77? Girl, you asked me every week. 752? Right? I don't know. 9,217? Feels like it. I don't like know. It. We've been here a lot. Girl. A lot, a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to another week of It Would Seem As Though, the podcast where we talk about anything, everything, and nothing. Mostly. Nothing. I know today's going to be a lot of nothing. I know, but Just fun. some silliness it's and fun. shit. And... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How's your week been? Um, good. I don't work at Starbucks anymore, like we talked about, but yeah. I officially don't work there anymore. So I've spent the last days um, sleeping. Now don't you officially still work there until the 13th? The 13th, but right. you're not actually physically working. No. Because you called off and said, Someone else covered Someone my shifts. Someone else can cover my shifts. Mm-hmm. Well, I got my shifts. That's covered. the way to do it. I mean, because when you have short timers, oh. it's like you don't even want to be there. The moment you put in your notice, you're all, Can I be done now? And But well, tell them, tell them about. Why it was really the worst day ever, your last day at work. Oh, so my last day of work was Friday. Um, and it, again, it's supposed to be Thursday. I don't work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, so it should have been yesterday. But I show up to work on Friday and I get a text message when I'm waking up to get ready from the store manager. And she said, hey girl, just so you know, the drains started to back up again. And we had to call a plumber for an overnight ticket, but we don't know if they came. So... If you get there and shit's all a wreck and, you know, there's water on the floor, the drains are backed up, will we have to close? Like, so just let me know. And I said, all right. And this happened two months ago where the drains backed up and backed up all over the floor mm-hmm. in Clackamas Town Center, right? And just in case you're not getting the full picture, it's sewage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's disgusting. And they sent, Starbucks sent plumber after plumber after plumber, and then they were like, no more. We can't keep sending fucking plumbers, because nothing is, they're not being able to fix anything. So it went through this whole thing between the mall and Starbucks, and they had to come to a conclusion. So they're working on it together, but it still backs up. It'll still occasionally start backing up. So I got to work on Friday, and I was like, holy fucking shit. The floors were, there was still a little wetness on, like, behind the counter and whatever, but it wasn't too bad, but the smell was like an open sewage drain. It was horrendous. So it smelled like you were in a porta potty. Uh Uh-huh. And there was, uh, there were, like, swarms of flies. Oh, no. Because, you know, like, little fruit flies will breed in that shit. And I know it's, like, it's very hard to get rid of, especially when you're having a problem like that, because how do you control that? Anyway, so I called my store manager and said, girl, it smells awful in here. We can't do anything. Um, so we set up like normal. We didn't like brew coffee because we were going to have to stay closed for a while. But I got all the money out, all the things, whatever. But we stayed closed. We were, cl- I got there at 6.30. We opened at 7. We stayed closed until 9 um, because we washed the floors and we washed the drains. And then I stood, I propped open the back door, which is an emergency exit. But it goes into, if you ever worked in a mall, it goes into like the back hallway. Right, it goes right. into the secret passageways. Right. Um, so I propped that open and then I stood at the front door and held it open while people kept trying to come in. I said, no, we're closed. You don't want to be in here right now. Like, back up. And everyone has like an attitude. It's so hysterical to me. Like, why the fuck did you come to Clackamas Town Center and this is your only option for coffee? Like, go away. You There's know There's a I mean? whole huge mall in there. Girl. Lots of places to get coffee. Girl, go away. Or like... Whatever, get coffee before you come to work. Make coffee at home. I don't fucking know, but like, why are you coming here crying at me because we're closed? Sorry, there's shit all over the floor. Like, what do you want me to fucking do about it? So, but then that whole day was just kind of a shit show. And I said, mm mm, I don't want to. So that whole morning, I spent texting other employees and partners, being like, hey, do you want to work tomorrow? Do you want to work Sunday? Do you want to work Monday? And I got my shift covered. And I told my store manager, yeah, I'm not coming back. Ever. No, I said all of my shifts are covered. I will come back sometime next week to drop off my keys and pick up my last little things. But like, I don't want to. But she's also on her way out. Like we talked about last week. She, her last day is the 16th. So minutes. Um, But yeah, I I was just like, no more. I already don't want to fucking be here. I'm already not super great for business because of the shit show this is. How we are just 
and being told that we're not a priority from like district managers and regional managers because we're just a cafe store in a mall. It's not a priority. Um, and I said, well, then I'm all done. Then if it's not a priority for you to come here and fucking make things better, then it's not a fucking priority for me to be here. Um, and like, and, and that's the thing. The other employees know that. Like, I'm part of management, but all of like the uh, partners and just full-time and part-time employees know that they're not a priority. So does that make you want to like do your job no. or show up or give a fuck? No. So Starbucks has really shot themselves in the fucking foot with this store because they're just hemorrhaging money. They're hem- we're not ma- that store doesn't make enough money, but they keep sending out contractors and sending out plumbers and sending out electricians and like maintenance people to fix shit. But we don't make enough money. Like you are just wasting my time. And so I was just over it. And I said, I don't, I don't, I don't need to do this anymore. No. And so I said, shifts are covered. Not coming back. See you later. Um, but yeah, my store manager is so funny. She has like 50 hours of sick time. So she's like, I'm not coming to work um, for most of this week. Because I'm going to use the rest of my sick time. And because, I said, and I said, good for you, bitch. Like, use it all. She's got the, care. she's got the mystery flu. Yeah. Well, and I think the worst part is, is I, you know, working at my old store, it's like any job. You have a love hate relationship, right? Some days you just don't want to be at work. But I never dreaded it, and I never hated it as much as I hated working at the mall. And, um, and so that that's really shitty. Is like you know, it took. Like, I told you, three months for the mall to break my spirit. But it, it did. It absolutely did. If I was at my old store, I would have stayed, right? I still would have been there because yeah. that store was run appropriately and the district cared and they got everything they needed and they had a full staff of trained people. And, you know, um, so yeah, it does make me kind of like bummed out to feel like I didn't even stay through graduation. Um, but it, what, what's more important, paying $3,500 $3, for my last semester or my mental health? So I chose my mental health. You know? Well, and now you've got that covered. Yeah. So it's yeah. all good. Yeah, so everything's fine. Now, it's just, it was just. So now you can be a famous podcaster. Oh, yeah. Famous. Famous. But it's like tens of people know who you are. I know, so, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, it, is, it is weird, though, because I've worked at Starbucks for this last time, five years. And so it feels weird to not have to wake up and go to work at the crack of dawn because yeah. I only oh, worked mornings, you know. Um, so yeah, it's a little yeah. different. And you worked mornings that weren't even morning yet because it was still dark out. Yeah. Especially when I worked at Misty Drive. There were times I'd be there at like four in the morning and open Blech. at 4.30. Yeah. Blech. Crazy things. Then yeah. you're up at like two, which, you know, I've had nights where I wasn't even home yet. When I still yeah. worked at the bar, I would not even get home before two. Yeah. So the idea of waking up at that time mm-hmm. to go somewhere, no thank you. Yeah. It's, it is weird. Well, I'm about how do you go to bed the night before early enough to get enough sleep. You, you, you genuinely don't, like, can't. You can't. And I remember my, for many years I was just drugging myself. I was taking like full 10 milligrams of melatonin and drinking like valerian root sleepy time tea, which is also just like melatonin. But because I just needed to get sleepy, like I needed yeah. to fall asleep, you know? So my problem with that always was shutting my brain off mm-hmm. because that my brain was like, no, it's not, it's not time to go to sleep. It's time to talk and tell, you know, talk about things and go do things. Oh and yeah. Blah, blah, blah. You know, it's like, when I uh, had a job where I worked graveyard shift, that was the fucking worst for me. Oh, yeah. Because I would come home at like 7.30 in the morning. Yeah. And it's bright daylight and the neighbor's dogs are barking and whatever's happening. It's like, how does one sleep? I know. It, it would also usually be pretty warm. Yeah. Because when it happened, it was during the summer. And I was like, this is the worst. Yeah. Honestly. Ugh. Well, and I think it's helpful too because like Gavin has very much the same schedule. He, we're just sleepy people. So, you know, eight, eight o'clock and I'm like in bed, take melatonin by eight thirty, be asleep by nine. You know, like it is good that you're, I mean, so good at so many levels, but it's good that you're with someone whose sleep schedule is very similar to yours. Yeah, very reflective. Because I've been with people who it's not. Right. And it's just, it doesn't work well. It, it doesn't work well. And, you know, one person's up while the other person's sleeping. And sometimes it's just too much, you yeah. know? To have to constantly, someone has to constantly be quiet in the house. Like, it's it's our house. Like, why should that have to happen? When I, uh, when I was friends with Andrew Hall. Mm. Uh, God rest his soul. God rest his soul. I remember the last relationship he was in, uh, he was living with this guy and he didn't understand why it was problematic for him to be up all night doing God knows what, watching TV, playing with his Barbies, whatever he was doing, yeah. while his boyfriend was in bed sleeping. Oh. And so he was never in bed with him. Ever, yeah. I mean, I imagine for, you know, fun times. For recreational activity. Yeah, and he was like, I just don't know, why is that a problem? 
Really? Because in typical relationships, mm -hmm. you expect to sleep with the person. Yeah. You know, and I'm just typical. I know not everybody does. Mm -hmm. People have separate rooms, separate beds, or whatever. Yep. And that's fine. And there are certainly people who have opposite schedules. Yeah. But I think typically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you're going to be in a relationship. You want to sleep with the person you're with. Yeah. I, you know, since Gavin and I have started dating, other than when he lived downtown and I obviously lived here, we spent still a lot of time together. And the only times that I haven't seen him would be like when he went to LA for Christmas. Yeah. Or after Christmas, I suppose. And then when we went to the beach. But that's yeah. it. Yeah. But it's still weird, you know? Yeah. Oh, by the way, it's been eight months yesterday. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It also feels like... It feels like... longer to me. Oh, well, it's what's so funny. Because he just fits into the family so nicely. I know. And what's so funny to me is the other day I said, do you remember back in February, we went to this park in Wilsonville or Tualatin and we're, they were, we were looking for like little uh, blown glass hearts. It was for Valentine's Day. They put so many throughout right. the parks, right? Whatever. So we did that. Valentine or uh, February, just walked around this park. It was cold. It was fun, though. We got to find and look at beautiful nature, whatever. And he said, do you remember we did that? That was February this year. And he was like, no, that was like two years ago before we were married. <laughs> right. And he said, yeah, it's yeah, what it feels like. I know. That's right. Yeah. And so it is funny how... Well, you know, because the Christmas when we met him was, what, Christmas six years ago? Uh, r roughly six yeah. years ago. Or... Because yeah, it doesn't feel like it was seven months ago. Mm, no. Or eight right. months ago, I guess. Yeah. Well, it seven. Just, seven, seven, yeah. yeah. It just doesn't that, and it's so funny because when you're with the right person, mm -hmm. the time, time kind of loses its meaning. Oh yeah, completely. Because you're like, no, we've been together forever mm -hmm. and it's just started and it's, you know, it's kind of everything everywhere all at once is right. how it kind of feels to me. Oh, because yeah, I know that I, uh, this year, T and I will be celebrating our 20th wedding anniversary. Yeah. So we've been together 21 years and it's like, how? How is that possible? Right. It's weird to me that it, things like that feel like yesterday and forever simultaneously. Yeah, exactly. Like, how? Yeah. Exactly. I'm just like, because when we met, now he has literally spent half of his life with me. Weird. Yeah. That's weird. Isn't that weird? That's super weird. Yeah. I know, because when I think about it, when I talk about it, I'm like, he, I, I've known him for half of his life. Yeah. Strange. Yeah, it is. It is kooky. Mm -hmm. But I told him this morning. I was like, you know, since we're going to be celebrating our twentieth anniversary this year, we should do something. I don't know what. Yeah. Because usually for our anniversary, we don't really do much of anything. We might get a little cake or something. It tends to be overshadowed by the anniversary that is the next day, which is the anniversary of Grace's adoption. Oh, because that's more important. Well, yes, Grace. I mean, <laughs> she's like, like, it's about it's me. my gotcha day, yeah. and so. Oh, That's gosh. more important than your stupid old wedding anniversary. <laughs> yeah. Because who cares about that? Yeah, blah, blah. Stupid wedding, stupid marriage, stupid Hate people. Mm -hmm. hey, this is me, yeah. so it's super <laughs> important that I have cake and a party and, you know. And yeah. we don't usually do much for that either. We usually will, like, get a cake or yeah. something. But but many years, our anniversary goes, like, happy anniversary. That's kind of it. Yeah. Again. You know? Yeah. Because when you're, we don't buy each other gifts for everything anymore because... We buy ourselves so much, so much crap that, yeah. you know, well, it's hard because when you've been together for so long and you do when you're grown people with money yeah, and it's not like we have money, but you, but yeah. we have enough money to live and do what we need to do. You tend to buy stuff as you need it. Yeah. You know, you don't go, well, I hope I get that for my birthday. Well, and let me tell you something. I think that is kind of the change of the world. Or maybe it's going back into a time where, you know, uh, the holidays mattered about something other than gift giving, right? Yeah. Because I feel the same way. Like, I'm already like, what am I going to get Gavin for Christmas and his birthday, right? Because when we want something or we see something, we we just get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Obviously, if it's not going to break the bank. But if it's like right. something, whatever, he'll love that, whatever. We just... Buy it then and give it to him then because I think that's more that's more special to me than waiting all year and being like, here's a bunch of gifts because I don't think getting together as a family and being thankful and loving each other and spending quality, like warm family time together is it should be like punctuated with gifts. No. Well, and if you're only getting gifts, you specifically, mm -hmm. if you're only getting gifts on Christmas and your birthday, yeah. that's just like this is very, very short time because... Your birthday is a month after Christmas. Yeah. And then Gavin's is like 10 seconds later. Right. You know, and so it's like, well, then you have to wait the rest of the year for anything yeah. to happen. Well, and I like doing things like, oh, well, let's get, you know, 
let's do something for the house. Let's buy this thing we need for the house or whatever, right? Like, I think that makes sense because it's something useful or something we wanted, but maybe we're going to put a little more money, whatever it is. But like, I just think that a lot of it has the commercialization of buying people things and like, Girl, do the inventory at your house. You don't need more shit. Do you know what I mean? Not you, specific, but you, general. Oh, me, specific. I don't need more shit. Girl, agreed. But (laughs) people in general just don't need more shit just to have. Like, I like my things too, but I don't need more of them. No. Do you know what I mean? I'm constantly like, what can I get rid of? You know? Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. I know. I've been thinking a lot about that because I was talking to someone the other day who's trying to... uh, live without consumerism Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's like good luck obviously get the things you need Uh obviously you need food yeah you need whatever the stuff you need yeah yeah. but you know and obviously your shoes wear out you need new shoes yeah yeah your clothes wear out you need new clothes but you don't need 14 pairs of jeans right you don't need every pair of shoes that louboutin ever made or whoever whatever it is right you know uh and i get wanting all those things yeah I mean, if I had totally. small enough feet and I could still walk in heels, yeah. I would want all the cute heels. Right. You know, whatever. But uh, the idea that you're kind of trying to end that portion of your, or at least bring it down to where yeah. you're not part of what is driving the money in this country. Right. You know. I know. And that's, I know it's so hard, you know, because I'm totally against capitalism. But then also, like, we live in this system, in this society. So there's no way to live in it and not contribute to it. Right. Right? You can obviously lessen that. And that's... I feel like as adults, as you grow up and... That, it's, it's hard though, right? As you grow up, you usually start making a little more money. So then you are able to buy the things that you want to yeah. buy. But then you have this mindset of like, I, mean, I don't need all this shit. And that's how I feel now. Like we, Gavin and I are focusing more on the yard and he's building a greenhouse and a new fence and like doing all these things, you know, to, to make the outside of our house something we want to be in, something we want to do, you know? And so it's, I feel like that's nice, right? He's buying supplies and building shit. That's different to me than going to Absolutely. Like, buy like a whole because shed. Because you're buying something for a purpose. You're not right. buying another tchotchke because you like it. Right. Exactly. You know, and I know that's for me one of the things that I will see something and go, oh my God, I love that. I, should, I want that. And then even sometimes I, I will go, like if I'm on Amazon or wherever, I will even put it in my shopping cart. Yeah. And there it stays. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then I, I will that. leave it there for days. Mm-hmm. And then I will go, you know... Now that I thought about it, I don't actually need that. And what's funny is when I uh, it used to be when I went shopping a lot, I would walk around with a shopping cart at stores that had carts. Mm-hmm. Uh, and even stores that didn't, I would walk around with like six dresses over my arm or whatever it was. And But I would carry them through the whole store. And by the time I got to the end, I'm like, I don't need any of this. Mm-hmm. And then I would go put them all back. Yeah. Yeah. Or I put all but one that I might actually need. Yeah, yeah. Or whatever. And this morning I was shopping for new dresses. Because uh, I actually do need a couple more dresses. But I was like, I don't really... Yeah, maybe not. Because mm-hmm. I shopped, th- literally looked through, and this is not an exaggeration, 500 dresses. Jesus. Because yeah. I did a search for maxi dresses. Yeah. And it says, 500 images, whatever. And so... I dutifully went through the very end and I was put a couple things in my shopping cart and I was like, mm, nah. No. Yeah. You know, but... No, I got that. It's, I yeah. do get that. Yeah. yeah. You know, I was going to tell you, because uh, today uh, we have a topic. Our topic is that we're going to talk about our shared um, experiences yeah. of being... a foster family yeah because we fostered for several years Mm -hmm. and annika was in and out of the picture while that was happening yeah but was here for a lot of it (laughs) yeah uh but i it didn't occur to me until i was making little notes for myself this morning that the last foster kid the one who broke me and made me go never again Mm -hmm. his name was gavin (laughs) oh i was like how funny i didn't even occur to me yeah you know because when i uh, talk to your sweet man. Yeah. Who I adore. I know. It's, He's a pretty it's great guy. It's really easy to adore him. It really yeah. is. Yeah. But it was like, it didn't even occur to me that the last nightmare foster child we had was Gavin. Gavin. You know. I barely knew him. Because oh, I, I forgot I wasn't going to say anybody's names. But Well, everyone else after this point is Bob. But Gavin, they don't know anything other than Gavin. No, it's not like I'm saying his last name or 
his social security number. Or where he lives, where he looks phone. like, who cares? Yeah. yeah. He's two foot six mm-hmm. and... He looks like a leprechaun. <laughs> and he looks like he's green. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, yeah. But that's kind of our topic today. But before we even get to our topic... Yeah. I do want to tell you a couple cool things. Tell me. Because I know I usually give you, like, the bad news, right? Mm-hmm. And then some good news. But this week, I have two items... Perfect. ...that are both good news. Love it. In fact, great news. Love. So, in the Netherlands... Okay. Uh, the there was a model who won Miss Netherlands. Okay, who's a trans woman. Love that. And she's an out trans woman. Oh, and she so she won Miss Netherlands, and now will go on to compete in Miss Universe as a trans woman. As a trans woman, the second trans woman ever to compete in Miss Universe. Crazy. Yeah, the fact that she won Miss Netherlands and is very openly trans. Yeah, I think that is super exciting. I love that. Uh, her name is Ricky Valerie Coley or Coley. Okay. I'm not sure, but, you know, she's from the Netherlands. It could be pronounced anyway. Honestly. Uh, but, but snaps for you. Snaps, bitch. Love you did that. It. Love that. You did it. Yeah. And in Latvia. Latvia. Which, you know, that's where we generally vacation in the summer. Uh-huh, in Eastern Europe. Yeah. That's Is insane. the seventh nation to be led by an openly gay head of state. What? Yep. That's Edgar. Insane. Alan Poe? <sighs> Alan Poe. <laughs> <laughs> Renkovics is uh, the new uh-huh. pre- newly elected president of Something Latvia. Eastern European. Yeah. Edgar, Eastern European man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He is, he was just recently elected the uh, president at the time, the president in office or whatever, he decided not to run again. So oh, wow. he was going to step down. And so this guy ran, and I don't think he ran unopposed. But he ran and he won and he's also openly gay. Love. So, love that. Yeah. So, especially, you know, with all the shit going on over there, I love that there is actually progress happening too. Crazy. Crazy, you know. Girl. Yeah. That makes me happy. Agreed. So, snaps for you. Snaps for you too, Edgar Allen. Dutch people in Latvia. Eastern Europe. Killing it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't, I haven't watched the Miss Universe pageant in years, but I might watch it this year just to see yeah. her. Because I don't usually care about beauty pageants. Usually no. I'm all... Oh, boring. <laughs> so when I was younger, yeah. and I mean up probably through through my 20s, maybe okay. into my 30s, I watched like Miss America, Miss USA, Miss Universe, and it was mostly for the pageantry of it all. Yeah, yeah. Because it was like, I want to see the big hair, the, yeah. the gowns, the whatever. Yeah, and yeah. then I also used to watch like all the award shows. Yeah, yeah. I remember. I stopped watching all the pageants stuff way before I stopped watching the award shows because I just lost interest. And I was mm-hmm. like, it's just a lot of pretty people. Yeah. Uh, whatever. And now I don't watch any of that. And I don't watch... I've gotten away from watching the award shows because in the last several years, I haven't seen most of the things that were mm-hmm. up for awards, so I just don't care. Yeah. And then I'll watch now, of course, with uh, everything going... Clips to YouTube, you can watch it in clips. Yeah, bitch. And I'm so why watch that. a six hour Oscar telecast? I would never want to watch the Oscars again because it is literally half a day long and it's yeah. predominantly just boring white people. And I don't yeah. fucking care. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I just don't care. I um, do love, however, when they have their rare, like, good political moments. Yeah. Like, because I was watching and I wish I could remember which actress it was who was. Uh, Announcing all the nominees for best director. Mm-hmm. I think it was last year, and she she's like, so in this all white category, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, oh shit, oh, <laughs> oh she called them out. Was like all white men, specifically, it was all white men. Mm-hmm. You know, and she did. She called it. I was like, oh, all listen, right. white men are having so, a really hard time right now. I know it's really hard to be a white man these days. Yeah, poor things. Mm. Their life is so hard. So hard. <laughs> Uh, speaking of white men, uh, there's a show, I think I told you about it, it's on, I think, is it on Prime? Sure, it's called The Power. Okay. With Toni Collette. Mm. And she plays the, uh... A white man. She plays a white man. It's really interesting. Lava! She plays the mayor of Seattle. Okay. And women have, young women have developed this thing where they can produce electricity in their bodies. Love that, too. Uh... But because women are now ha- have power, men are, of course, you know, all uh, butt hurt and threatened. Yeah. And so there's this group called, on the show, called Urban Docs, which is some man hiding behind 
a, a computer created image mm-hmm. telling men, you know, you got to take the power back and we're, we should be in power and blah, blah, blah. Boo. Well, and I just recently saw a thing and I don't, I wish I could remember, but it was like very similar. I was like, oh, so this is based on real life because mm. there's websites where these men are like, you know, we have to take back the power. We're losing control and we need to be in control. And it's specifically white men. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's time you weren't in power. Yeah. That's really what needs to happen. Yep. So Agreed. Here, but here. I really enjoyed the show. It's, I think, I want to say it's nine episodes. Okay. Yeah. What's funny to me is if someone said to me, I want you to watch this nine hour movie, I would be like, are you high? What have you done? <laughs> A nine hour movie, you're crazy. You I've say seen she, Lord of the Rings. You'd be like, who has the time? Right. Is this <laughs> Lord of the Rings about nine hours? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Each one. <laughs> there's like 27 of them and nine then, hours each close yes girl yeah. you're so close so there are three originals and they're about three hours each but then there's the extended like director's cut which is right. a little extra and I want you to know I just watched all of them with on Gavin on purpose? on purple um, with Gavin because I watched all the Hobbits first which again are also 14 hours long yeah and then I watched all of Lord of the Rings what's funny to me is the Hobbit book is like this thin little book how did they make nine hour movie out of that thin little anyway Girl, go ahead. but I watched it and like they're good for what they are like high fantasy nonsense right but I was like alright I'll watch this but literally the, the Lord of the Rings movies the director's edition it was like 12 hours of watching movies and there's yeah. three of them so a total of like the Hobbit universe there's like six movies like Hot, three Hobbit three Lord of the Rings and now there's a prequel show that's on Prime Oh, okay. Um, oh, yes, I saw Rings, that. Rings of Power, Rise of Power. That's really, really good, though. It's okay. Because re- it's set in the history. Like, you know who Kate Blanchett is in the movie? She's yeah. like a high elf. It's when she's young. Okay. So, you know, 85,000 years ago. Yeah. Because she's old. Well, because elves live forever. Literally yes. forever, yeah. yeah. Um, there's but, my, some... but my point really yeah, yeah. was, if somebody ever said to me, I want you to watch this nine-hour movie, I'd be yeah. like, you're on crack. But to watch it broken up into nine one-hour segments is like, different. oh, peasy. Different. I will binge that right now. Easy peasy. Oh, yeah. 100%. And I'll probably yeah. watch it in a day. Yeah. But if you so... ask me to sit here without any intermission. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I can't just stop it and yeah. go get a drink. Like and go it's to the live on cable like, and it's 1990. That is, you know, it's another thing is uh, I talk to my children about that because yeah. they just don't know a world where you can't just pause TV. Right. And they're like, we're watching this. Pause it. Mm-hmm. Well, I know, but no, 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 no. But it, when I was a kid, back in the early 1900s, Stone Age. Yeah. yeah, TVs had just been invented, mm-hmm. and <laughs> you had to get up and change the channel by hand. Okay, you know. Yeah. But I literally, it was like, oh, I've been waiting and waiting to watch this show. Yeah. If I had to do anything, whether that be pee, go do a thing, like whatever, mm-hmm. I waited for those commercials. Yeah. And then I went as fast as I could yep. and listened for the show to come back yep. on. You know, because there was no pausing it. No. And once it was over, it was over. Yeah. And if it was like a regular weekly show, it wasn't going to be on back again until it's, the summer. Yeah. When it was on in repeat. Like in syndication, right? No. No. No, no, no. It would be, so let's say something like the Big Bang Theory. You know yeah. how they start in September? Yeah, yeah. They usually end in the spring. Right, right, right. Oh, I see. The next season. But then they would just repeat oh. the entire season. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, and then, so you get to see it when it, re- but it would be at the end of the season. Oh. And then the new, se- the yeah. new season would start in fall yeah, yeah. again. And I was like, so yeah, it wasn't like you could have just go, oh, what no. am I, I'm going to watch that whole series yeah. today. Well, and I think about that often too, is like being, because, you know, growing up in the 90s, watching a show and like, okay, commercial break, like all, you and your two siblings had to go pee at the same time, so you're like trying to pee as quickly as possible, grab a snack, and someone's by the TV screaming like, it's all! You know, right. you know, rushing back, <laughs> like fucking food and peeing your pants. But you're like, I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna yeah. see it. I don't care. I'll pee next break. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. No, I get it. That was my that was my childhood. Mm-hmm. Except mm-hmm. I had a remote control, and you did it. I did not, and I didn't have color TV either. We didn't have a color TV Weird. until I was a uh, junior in high school. Mm-hmm. We had a. T- What's funny is it seemed like a big TV because we had a 25 inch. Black and white Curtis Mathis TV, yes, but it was one did. of those ones that was in like this huge wooden box, <laughs> yeah. basically. So it seemed huge. Yeah, very little of it was the screen. <laughs> yeah, that's always so funny to me that they made TVs like that in like a chest of drawers or something. Oh 
<laughs> yeah, in a console. Yeah. Yeah, that was crazy. And it's a big old piece of furniture yeah. with the TV. And most of the furniture was nothing. Mm-hmm. It was just there for yeah. looks. And it was, I, mm, I don't know. Cool. And TVs also weighed about a thousand pounds. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, even TVs, when it was just like the old school TV, that not flat screen, yeah. you know, those are heavy too. Yes. Obviously. I have a little tiny one mm-hmm. that is an old school TV that is a TV VCR DVD combo. Girl. And it's tiny. That is like. And it, that shit is heavy. That's rich people shit. I DVD know. VCR TV combo. I know. Girl. Yeah. What are you, rich? Yeah. Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I was just talking about that yesterday too with my children that I always thought everybody who had the cool toys. Mm hmm. That we can never afford, obviously, we're rich. Oh, yes. There are other things to me, too. Um, ice and water coming from your refrigerator. Rich. Rich people stuff. Oh, Girl, yeah. Rich people. Uh-huh. Yeah, if you didn't have those janky ass plastic ice cube trays in your freezer yep. that nobody ever fucking filled, yep. and so you'd have to go in there and it'd be empty trays. Yep. Uh, yeah, you were rich. I'm sorry, also, like a garage people parked in. I thought you were rich, rich. then, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? If you had a house with more than one bathroom, uh, rich. rich. Rich girl. Yeah. Well, what's yeah. funny is I was talking specifically yesterday. This example was about my cousin, okay, uh, Anne and okay. Jean. And, yeah, yeah. You know, when they were kids, they had this because Grayson brought up like we were talking about things that I had given away toy wise. Yeah, and one of them was her Dora the Explorer kitchen. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, I gave it away because you said it was okay. Yeah. So don't act like I did something terrible. And I said, and because she loved it. She used it until she was way too big for it. And I said, but when I was a kid, Mm -hmm. my cousins had a kitchen that had running water. What? And I was like, rich. That's And the funny thing is I now, of course, know they weren't rich. Yeah, yeah. But but their kitchen had running water. That's mind-boggling to me. Yeah. They also had this cool thing that I'm probably going to explain all wrong, but it was kind of like a... A, uh, what do you call it? Like a Surrey? So it's like this little multiple person bicycle. Oh, yeah. It okay. had a canvas thing over the top. Rich. Rich. That's rich people stuff, yes. girl. Because I yeah. didn't even have a regular bicycle. Uh-huh. And when I did get one, it was some broke down piece of shit that didn't have brakes. Nor did it have a full tire. Who knows? <laughs> um, I, I had to ride it like a unicycle, <laughs> though it wasn't one. Because um, two tires is rich people girl, stuff. Too many. Too many tires, you're rich. Um, but I also people who had like you know actual tree houses or like little oh, yeah. houses built that had rich. like rich. Um, my sperm donor attempted to build a hodgepodge fucking shack in like the fucking forest behind my house, and it was full <laughs> of hornets. <laughs> that sounds right. <laughs> so I said, "Here's your full of hornets uh, piece of nor? shit. When you climb in, it's probably gonna fall over. You're gonna die. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. So when I was in second grade, third grade. The Chrissy doll came out mm. with her magic growing hair, you know, right. whatever. I wanted one so bad, but I didn't get one. And I remember one of the girls in my class brought her brand new, shiny, Fucking beautiful bitch. Chrissy doll mm. to class. And I'm like, rich. Yeah. Yeah. That girl is rich. I agree. Well, and it, you know, this could go on forever because there's so many things that I said, only rich people have that. Right. But do you remember when like Tamagotchis or Gigapets came oh, out? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in third grade, and I remember Chelsea Cody. Mm. Bro, oh, Chelsea Cody. Fucking Anna Nicole Smith. Brought her gigapet to school, <laughs> and like, then you know how they say, like, you have to leave your gigapets at home because they're fucking annoying. Right. But one of it was like 15 bucks, and I remember being like, your parents bought that for you? That's expensive. Like, blown away that her right. parents would buy rich. her. Rich. Rich. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, and, sing- and, and only children, everything they had, they were rich. Yeah. Everything. So, my last example that I'm going to give. So, I went. Gosh, how old? I don't know. It was the late sixties, but I went to we went to my cousin's house. They had just gotten a brand new house, mm-hmm. already rich. They had a new house. Which cousin is this? Robin. Okay. So I went, and it was funny because when I talked to her about it, she was like, "That is so crazy because we barely had enough money to scrape anything together." Yeah, yeah. And my parents were horrible. Anyway, <laughs> but <laughs> went to their house. They had in the wall a magic fireplace that you uh. pushed a button. And it would lit because yep. it was gas. Witchcraft. And they also had a color television. What? I know. And I'm all rich. These yep. people are rich. Yep. I agree I was, with you. But my view of the world was so skewed because we were uh, agreed. poor. Agreed. 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 I think refrigerators like this, side by side opening, uh-huh. freezer and fridge, rich. Right? I think if kids had a TV in their room, rich. 
I think random shit, bitch. There was random things that <laughs> yeah. I was like, you're wealthy. You, you have your own so phone line? Wealthy. Oh, Rich. Di- right, girl. Phone line? The, the, the products they had in like their showers or bathrooms? Rich. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it wasn't suave. I was like, what I is love this? that guy, because we've never had this conversation. Yeah. But the, I, I love it that we feel the same way. Oh, yeah. I remember going into people's houses where like their furniture all matched. Oh, uh, what? I know, rich. Rich. Or their appliances all worked. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Their windows were all in working order and they had screens in them. Uh-huh. I mean, I know these all sound like silly Basic. things, but when you are raised in poverty where literally we had the same couch forever mm-hmm. and it was held together with tape, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like my mother bought it from the doctor because mm-hmm. the doctor, she went into our regular family doctor and he's like, oh, I'm redoing the the office. Yeah. Uh, do you want this couch? Because it was a very long couch and with six kids, you know, yeah, why sounds not? good. And he's like, I'll sell it to you for 25 bucks. Yeah. She had to buy that $25 couch on payments. Because oh. we was po. Yeah, girl, poor, poor. And it was like $25 for an eight foot long couch yep. that was pleather. Uh, but it was like, I think about that. I think, mm-hmm. And that's also what made me, so it's like, when shit's broken, I don't want it. I was mm-hmm. like, get rid of it. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, this broken thing. Oh, no, Trash. I'm not going to put tape on it. I'm not going to. F- no, nope, it's got to go. Got to go. <laughs> so. I get one. Well, I get that too. Um, I think about this is my last example. Okay, is you, you know, you can go from one room to the other room, and you don't have to bundle up to go into that other room because your insulation in that other room. Hang is on, fucking- so there's heat in every room. <laughs> <laughs> I think about grandma's house. I think about the house that I lived in with grandma. Yeah. And like the heater was like one furnace that shot in the living room. That's it. By the way, every house I lived in growing up. Okay. 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 And but, so her bedroom and that little office room, whatever, which was like, like ice, ice all the time. Or like an oven. I'd be like, I gotta go to my bedroom and like throw a, bur- like a burka. Nope. Nope. <laughs> throw a parka on and some blankets. Maybe some like. Put my hands in the oven for a while and then go, <laughs> right. bitch. I rem- that, and you can see your, it's summer. You can see your breath. You're like, why is it always so cold in here? Yeah. Like weird shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the house I lived in when I was a freshman, sophomore, junior mm-hmm. uh, was the worst. Right, I bet <laughs> because it was it was what we call Samson's house. Okay, yep. So I lived in the attic with oh. my idiot siblings and. It was an unfinished attic. There wasn't even boards on all of the floor. There was no insulation in the ceiling. And there weren't even... There wasn't even drywall on the ceiling or the walls. So it was all just raw yeah. and no insulation. So it was freezing. freezing. And if you stepped off of the little... The two... The, what do you call them? The uh, pieces of wood. Two by four? No. Gangplank. <laughs> Gangplank. <laughs> I'm thinking bigger, you know, plywood. The yeah, yeah. Of okay. Plywood, okay. You, you would just go through the roof and ceiling and into the. Floor Did that below happen you. to any of you? Huh? Did that happen to no, any of you? No, oh, God. damn. But it was like, okay, this is terrible. But in the winter, it would be freezing, and you could actually see ice forming on the inside mm, of the window. Bitch. And in the summer, it yeah. was like an oven. Yep. Because yep. it was also a metal fucking roof. <laughs> so it was like, are you trying to kill us? We're all gonna die. Which, by the way. In this day and age, I think child services would be like, you can't have your kids. You here. can't live in here. Um, right. This and, is... But every house we lived in, the only heat was, was like either an oil stove or a wood stove on the main floor. So right. the upstairs was always cold. Always. Yeah. But usually they were insulated. Yep. This one yeah. was not. Nope. I think about people with decks that didn't have holes or soft spots in them. What? Rich. You're rich. You don't have a deck. I didn't even live in a house that had a deck. I know. You don't have a deck or a porch that could kill you. By walking on it, rich. <laughs> right? Rich, you're rich. If your house is not <laughs> in such disrepair that you're in danger at all times. Honestly. Yep. Rich. Rich, girl. These rich kids, let me tell you, they I had know. no idea. No. No idea. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so I think we're done with that topic. For now, but what we really are, so we're going to talk, like I said, about uh, our experience with foster care. Mm-hmm. And I want to start out by saying, because I'm going to tell some stories, huh. uh, that... The idea of fostering children is great. Love it. You know, and really, if you can do it, do it. Don't let these st- stories I'm going to tell you scare you off. Because I'm only going to tell a couple that are like, oh my God. You should. Yeah. But <clears throat> sometimes you get kids who just really need a place to be. Yeah. And are grateful for a place to be. Mm-hmm. Or are just, they get to, they're more, mostly they're grateful that they get to be just kids. Yeah. And they're a part of like a family that gives a shit. 
Yeah. That's a lot Because so it. many of these kids didn't get to be kids except when they were in our house. Right. They had to be like the ones running their house because their parents were on drugs or their parents were missing or whatever it was. You know, they would, parents yep. had, were doing so much nonsense that they were taken away well, from Well, and, and so like the program that you went through though was like at risk youth, right? Like yes. yeah. boys and girls that needed to have supervision, sight, sound supervision, like 24 hours a day yeah. essentially. Yeah. So Which it was, was through boys and girls aid. Right. Well, and this could have been for many reasons, that their parents were shit, that these kids were, like, involved with, like, gang affiliation, or they're doing drugs, or they skipped right. school, or they right. were... So all of the kids in the program that we worked with, yeah. all of them, were had been adjudicated, which means they'd all been to court for some reason. Okay. Whether that was because they had done something, or their parents had done Copy, something. Copy, okay. But they had all been to court, whether it was, like, they had to have a hearing to see if they would be taken away from their family. Mm-hmm. So what we had was a transitional program, which was three months. And so they would be in our program while the court decided what to do with them. Right. Whether that be send them back home with some counseling for the parents or whatever, or move them to a different program or put yep. them in permanent foster care or put them up for adoption. Yeah. You know, rarely was it ever that. But that's what, how that started. And so we're going to start with the very first one. And as Annika mentioned, all the people in our story today are named Bob. Yep. Because I'm not going to talk about any of their real names. Uh, but Bob number one, our Bob. very first kid. It was so funny because Tina were very excited about doing this, mm-hmm. having foster kids, helping kids. We also went into this with this wide-eyed naivete about, mm-hmm. you know, we're going to have these wonderful kids and they're going to be so excited to have a home and blah, blah, blah. No. No, no, because most of these kids are scared, mm-hmm. uh, and, and they've been in the system already. Yeah. So some of them are really tough and don't want to have anything to do with you, or don't want to show that. Yeah, you know. <clears throat> but kid number one, mm-hmm. Bob number one, Bob. Ugh. <laughs> so I was actually at work when Bob got to the house, mm-hmm. and T was home, and again, all excited. We'd gotten the room ready, mm-hmm. did all the things. Well, Bob gets there and with uh, his worker mm-hmm. and gets all settled and whatever, walks into the kitchen and looks there on the refrigerator. There's a picture of Annika. Of course there is. Right. Because uh, she's our girl. <clears throat> and Bob's like, um, I know her. <laughs> and we're like, how could, how could you know her? Yeah. Because we assumed that he lived in Portland. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and he goes, I go to school with her. Yeah. And I was like. What? What? How yeah. is that possible? I know. How is that possible? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I live in McMinnville and we go to school together. Yeah. And she's friends with my sister. Yeah. And blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, it's a small world yeah. after all. Yep. I know. <sighs> yeah. That was our, and our first kid was also, Bob number one was queer. Mm-hmm. And so we were all excited. It was, oh, we have a queer kid. Per. A queer kid who's friends with Annika. Well. Friends. His sister <laughs> was friends with Annika. Yeah. He, of course, was an annoying little brother, as Ugh. annoying little brothers tend to be. And do you know what? Is that he was my age. Like, we're the same age. Right. But you were friends with the older sister. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, like, but... I knew who he was because he was, like, infamous in McMinnville because he was, like, flamboyantly queer, right? Ooh. Like, Flamboyant barely covers like this one. makeup skirts, like the whole heels. <laughs> yeah, short, yeah. short curly hair <laughs> and backwards eyebrows. And <laughs> what was with? So you know how eyebrows tend to be thick at the, in the, the middle, center, yeah, and then they get mm-hmm. thinner as they go out. Mm-hmm. His were thin, got fat. Yeah, it was like, what is? What's wrong, droopy dog? Uh, what right? happened? <laughs> Who? Honestly. How? Yeah. Um, and he was just absolutely fucking annoying. And I uh, could not stand him. And he thought because we were both queer people that we'd be like kikiing together. And I could not fucking stand this child. And we're the same age. Well, because he was team too much. He was literally too much. So yeah, when you told me, oh yeah, we have Bob from McMinnville here. I said, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why he there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He well... Was- Kind of, he was just kind of awful and annoying and a bitch about everything. You know? All true. All of those things. Um, but yeah. I don't think I told you. Or maybe I did. Years later. So things ended poorly at our house because Bob yeah. couldn't follow even the most basic of rules. Yeah. And so he had to go. Yeah. <clears throat> well, years later, I was hosting Pride as I do. And right. I ran into Bob. Every right. Time. Oh my God. And he came over and said, I just want to tell you thank you 
because uh, being with you guys was great and I blew it. Mm. And wow. I'm sorry. And I was like, what? Qua? Because that also, not the common thing. No. That, but he did say thank you and I'm sorry. And so I was like, that was wonderful. Yeah. Because, well, that... you know, you got to grow up eventually. And hopefully when you grow up, you realize that your mistakes yeah. were your mistakes. Your mistakes. And you own them. Because I know for me, and as a foster parent and as a parent, I've made a bajillion mistakes. Sure. But I always try to own them and be like, listen, I know I did this thing and I'm sorry. I fucked up. But I fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, I got that. So, Bob, number two that we're going to talk about. And this is the one where, you know, you were involved in this one. Uh, so, this kid. What? <laughs> this kid. The one, who, Bob, who stole your necklace. Oh, fuck that bitch. Okay. Yeah. Fuck right. Bob. So necklace stealing bitch. Annika had gotten a necklace from her boyfriend. Who was also, by the who way. Who was also a foster, foster boy. <laughs> also named Bob. <laughs> They're all named Bob. <laughs> he anyway, this kid stole Annika's necklace. Mm-hmm. And I mean we couldn't prove it, but we knew he did it. Yeah. Right? Well, one day the program took them bowling. This is ridiculous. It is such a ridiculous story. I hated so this So if they were not with us, mm-hmm. they were in the program. Yeah. They were at the school at the program. Yeah. So the, the program would take them to school, but would take them out on little adventures and whatever. Yeah, yeah. So one day they took them bowling. And when he comes back to the house, he has a bowling bag with a bowling ball in it. And I was like, Qua? Uh, where did that come mm-hmm. from? Because you didn't leave the house today with a bowling ball. No. By the way, the bowling ball was also engraved with someone's name. Normal. And it wasn't... His. Weird. It did not uh, say Bob on it. No? It, no, it said something like Randy. Okay. We'll pretend. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knows? Bobette. Bobette. And I was like, and me being the queen of suspicion, mm-hmm. I'm all, who this? Mm-hmm. Oh, this is my brother's bowling ball. My mom brought it to me today so I could go bowling because I don't like to use the bowling balls at the place because blah, blah, blah. It's hard to find the right size. Quack, quack, quack. quack, quack. quack. You know? Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. So, that's your brother's. Yeah, it's my brother's. So, Bob Ed is my brother. Okay. Love. Cool. So, being me, I immediately call his mother. And I said, so, Bob tells me that today, while he was with program, you brought him a bowling ball. And she goes, what? Mm. Yeah, she said, he said you brought his brother's bowling ball. He doesn't have a brother. Mm, bitch. And I was like, wait, what? He has one sister. No brothers. Mm-hmm. So, he doesn't have a brother named Bob Ed? Mm-mm. No. And I was like, what? So, okay, thank you. Okay, bye. So I call his counselor and the counselor was like, wait, what? And I said, how did y'all take this kid bowling? And he stole a bowling ball in a bowling bag. And you... And y'all didn't notice? No one no one thought to say, what's that? Your briefcase? Right. It For was some like, business? Well, they must have just thought he brought it with him and nobody noticed. We didn't have it with him when he got on the bus, but he had it with him when he got back on to go home. This is my issue with the B, the Boys and Girls Aid Society, is that there were so many, there were things that happened that I was like, how did you, like, and I'm not even a foster parent, but I was like, how did y'all not catch this, right? Right. You're, they're, you're, they're under your supervision all fucking day. Like, you didn't notice that he didn't have a bowling ball with him when y'all went, but then he had one coming back that didn't, like, sound the alarms for you. Right. You like, didn't, well, as he was getting back into the van, go, hang on. Yeah. Where did this come from? And you're, Who's well, you know, to? we just thought, I mean, murder. And so they said, oh dear, well, protocol is beat him. Is to beat him, right? But they said, don't do that because mm. then we could get in trouble. Yeah. Blah, but blah. they said protocol is actually when they commit a crime and well, stealing is a crime mm-hmm. that you call the police. Love. And I'm like, okay. So we called the non-emergency number like you're supposed to do. And they call us back and they're like, um... Okay, well, let me look. And so they look up Bob's mm-hmm. information because, of course, he's been in the system. Sure. And they're like, oh, okay, well, we're going to call his counselor. So they call the counselor, they call us back, and they said, well, well bring him on down. <laughs> they said, if you can, can you just bring him down to the jail? <laughs> to the, and is the underage one. Yeah, whatever juvenile it's detention. Yeah, juvie. And I was like, Okay. I would literally love to. Thank you so much for Thank asking. <laughs> I would rather he wasn't in my house. Mm. Uh, so we literally, <laughs> we get in our van uh-huh. and make sure he's in the far back corner so uh-huh. he can't just jump out. No, and at that point, it's what it's you, it's you and your husband, it's me and my ex, Bob, and then it's stealing Bob and 
other foster and giant dad. Bob and giant Bob. Yeah, who's like has him boxed in basically, so he and he's like eight feet tall, so he's not getting past. Him. Yeah, mm-mm. right. And so, so we start. We're like, we're gonna go bowling because y'all <laughs> had so much fun bowling today. Yeah, and so we drive to juvie and. Stealing Bob doesn't even real. I mean, we're driving into. We have to go through yep. the closed gate, and he has, has his bowling through. ball because we're going bowling. Yeah, he has the whole thing with him, whole kit and caboodle. Yep. And we get there, and T gets out of the car, talks to the security guard. The security guard is like, "Oh, okay. Yeah, we're expecting you." And go over to this gate and do this thing, and it's clearly a jail, clearly because they have to open the security gate. We're not at the bowling alley, yep. and this kid is just oblivious. Yep. And so we get there, and the security guard opens the van door, and he goes, you, come with me. And he's all, what? Uh-huh. And everyone else piles out so he can get out. Uh-huh. And we're like, bye. <laughs> and we're then, going bowling. <laughs> and then we went bowling. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, they, yeah. but they took him and his bowling ball that he yep. stole, and that was the last time we ever saw that one. Thank God. I know. He was horrendous. But it was like, what are you thinking? Honestly. You know? Yeah. That fuck boy. I know. Uh, one of the ones that just drove me crazy was and I don't think you were here for this one this kid and honestly I don't remember his real name and I don't care okay uh, cause he was a shit yeah 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 uh, also Bob oh uh, right so when Bob came to be with us he had told us that he uh, had run away to Seattle and I was like okay and but this was a kid who everything he said had to be contrary okay. like if you said, oh, it's a lovely day. Oh, I hate sunshine. And uh, I'm going to order pizza. I hate pizza. Okay. My favorite pizza is cheese. I hate cheese. Mm-hmm. It was like, okay. Oh my God, I'm hungry. I hate food. I hate food. <laughs> <laughs> I hate people. I oh, Okay, whatever. So I said, oh, you ran away to Seattle. And he's like, yeah, I ran from, I ran. Mm-hmm. Literally, I ran all the way from here to Seattle. And I was like, What? Wait, no, I do remember that. <clears throat> do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was like, um, not possible. Mm. This was also before I learned that it's okay not to call people on their shit. Yeah, yeah. Because, actually, I didn't learn that until, you know, my mother was full on <laughs> dementia when I was like, it doesn't matter. Uh-huh. Just let it go. But I was like, you ran. Mm. In not one day. Not even, like, hitchhiked. Mm, just in or one day. walked. And it, yeah, in like five hours. Oh. He ran. Something. Now I'm going to tell you the Boston Marathon is 25 miles and it takes people several hours to finish. Usually I think four to five hours to finish. Mm-hmm. And these are trained athletes. Yeah. And they are exhausted afterward. Whatever. It's about 160 miles to Seattle. It takes three hours to drive. Which I to say, sometimes it takes five hours just to get to Seattle proper. Yeah, well, it's running on traffic. Driving. Yeah, yeah, and this kid's like, "No, I ran all the way to Seattle in five hours." Did you flash? Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's impossible. That's physically impossible. Mm-hmm. And no, he, and but he would not give up the possibility that that's what. But this is also the kid who like was telling us all the time he was going to run away. Mm-hmm. And I'm all okay. Bye. I said, Listen, and we gave every kid the same speech when they got here. We told them all the rules and we said, listen, if you decide to run away, which mm, you might, Mm. because we had kids run away. Mm -hmm. If you decide to run away, please just walk out the front door. Yeah. Don't like climb out the window. Don't pull some stunt. Just walk out the front door, but close it after you so our dogs don't follow you. Yep. Have a little bit of courtesy. I don't care if you, I mean, I don't want you to run away, but if you run away, Mm. you know, don't. Some of our dogs you. suffer, whatever, <laughs> yeah. by yeah, getting yeah. hit by a car. Right. Just walk out the front door, go. Yep. Well, this kid, he was like, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to run away. And I'm like, okay. Awesome. Uh, you know, if you do, you do. And he threatened it all the time. Well, if you make me do, I'm going to run away. Well, I can't help that. And so one day, he's like hovering around the front door. And I'm like, is today the day? Mm-hmm. What? Is today the day you're running away? Because you're, you keep going, like, hanging by the front door. And he's like, maybe. And I'm like, okay, just close the door when you go out, please. Yeah. And he's like, so you're not going to try and stop me? And I was like, no, we've told you a hundred times. No, no, no. We can't physically stop you. Nope. We're not supposed to stop you. No. But what will happen is when you go out the door and hopefully close it, we, of course, will call your person. Yep. And then we'll call the police. That's it. So you better start running for Seattle. They'll probably never catch you because you're the fucking Flash. (laughs) (laughs) They'll never even see you, but a a blur of light running past. (laughs) And so he did. He just walked out the front door, and I'm like, 
Bye. Bye. Bye, bitch. Bye, bitch. I never liked you anyhow. Mm-hmm. You know. I can't. Yeah. Wait, I want to... There's... I have a couple. Oh, Because it was miserable. But mine are just, like, no, super cute. Um, <laughs> so there was this one Bob, when we lived in our old house, who was a stupid fucking idiot, which, as a teenager, I thought most of them were stupid fucking yeah. idiots, you know? Um, this is the it's one... It's funny who, that it just... Even though you said Bob, I already know which Bob you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the one who had the father who came oh. back in the DeLorean from the past, <laughs> who was wearing, you know, the crop top and the jeans that you could see his whole business. First of all, I just want to say this. When the man came in to pick up his son, because he picked him up, he was leaving the program. Annika and I were sitting at the table, the, di- the dinner table. Yeah. Uh, I think we were playing a game or something. Well, yeah. And he comes in. And literally looks like he came from the Foreigner concert in 1978. Uh, yeah. With his crop top. Or his Doc Brown bitch. <laughs> and jeans so tight. They were painted. But they were also bell bottoms. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so his junk was like right at eye level and it was like, oh On God. display, bitch. Right. Anyway, I'm like, go ahead. I'm a child, man. I can see a whole <laughs> dingleberry. Um, <laughs> and he had like a beautiful mullet. He was just like a stunning he did. It was, again, he came from the Foreigner concert in 1978. So after meeting his father, I understood why Bob was such a shithead. Because if your dad n- never got with the times either, I'm assuming you'd be a little bit of a fuck up. But, so this Bob was such a piece of shit. Um, and... I was 16, 17, yeah. and he thought he was, like, real funny and real cute, and one time decided to take my phone. And, again, being in this program, they weren't allowed to have phones. They weren't right. allowed to have these things. They could use a computer, but under supervision, right? Right. Okay. But I was like, give me my phone back. And I was in the kitchen cutting something. Cheese? Who knows? Because cheese is my favorite thing. So I was sure. Cutting cheese. So I had this giant fucking knife in my hand, and I held it up to him. <laughs> and I said, give me my fucking phone. And he's like, ooh, you're not going to stab me. Boo. And I said, uh-huh, give me my phone. And then he did the whole still like machismo, ooh, you're not going to stab me. And then just kept walking towards me. Why well, didn't put the knife down? And he just kept walking towards me. So what he do, bitch? He ran into my knife. And you know what? <laughs> I didn't stab him. I was just holding a knife. And he walked into it. That's not my problem. He gave my phone back, and he had a little bit of cut in his chest. That's not my problem. No. He. But this is the same ass hat who said into to you, it. "I want to know what it feels like someday to get shot." To which you replied, "I'm sure you will." <laughs> <laughs> well, he was such a fucking loser that I was like, "Shut up!" And you're not that cool. You're like no. sixteen year old little douchebag. Like, shut yeah. up. But um, that wasn't, you know, that was the first child that I stabbed in the program. Right. The second one wasn't like. It wasn't as hardcore. It was, it was a, a mild step. Yeah, it was in this house. And the kid annoyed me to the point where I was going to kill somebody. So he's like, I just stabbed him. Um, we're sitting next to each other. You're making dinner. It's myself and that boy and your father-in-law sitting at the table and uh, waiting. Just waiting. This, the, you know, it's all set. So we have like uh, plates in front of us and utensils. And he keeps taking his fork and just scraping it across the plate. So it's shrieking. And I said, ooh, little boy, I'm going to need you to stop. And I said, please stop. Please stop doing that. Please don't do that. And he didn't listen. So I said, if you don't stop, I'm going to stab you. And so he did it some more. So what utensil do I have? A fork, bitch. So I picked it up and straight into the shoulder with him. And it wasn't that hard. Um, but that one... That one, um, I was interrogated by the police for. You were, because he decided that would be his way out. <laughs> yep. So he went and then dr- dug the fork into his shoulder. Yeah. So that, I mean, because you poked him with it and it didn't even leave a mark. No. He dug it literally into the meat of his arm, so he had his, he had marks. Of, yeah. Uh, I was like, ooh, <laughs> gross. Yep. And the doctors were all... What? Like, if she had just stabbed you, this would be mostly healed by now. But it's like a festering wound. Right. A festering pustule. Yep. So the police came and said, so, did you? And I said, mm-hmm. And, I mean, but not not like that. Not hard. No, officer, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. It was just a minor stabbing. Yeah, no big deal. Um, but yeah, your turn. Go for it. Well, this, we're like almost out of time. Cause are we serious? Yeah, we really are. Oh my god. we didn't start this until like 40 minutes in because, you know, like we do. We chat chat. <clears throat> the one I have to talk about is probably one of my favorite stories of all time. So, you and I mm-hmm. were out driving around 
with Bob and Bob and uh, Bobby and Bob. Oh, yeah. (laughs) uh, So we're driving around and we're trying to figure out what to do. Like, what would be fun today? Yeah. And every, literally everything we suggested, and it was only Annika and I suggesting things like, let's do this, let's do that, and everything was being shot down by Bob. Mm-hmm. Bobby was up for anything. Yeah, he's like, yeah, <laughs> let's do it. But the other one was all, no, I hate that. Well, the, one of the first things we said was, do you want to go play pool? And no, I hate pool. I don't know how to play pool. I hate it. Okay. Well, what about, how about we go to the zoo? Oh, no, I hate the zoo. I, to which Annika replies... What did I say? I don't remember. You don't remember? (laughs) Really? Why did a lion touch you in your no-no spot? (laughs) I almost wrecked the car. I laughed so hard. Well, Well, so in the end, we decided to go play pool. Right. Right? And Annika and I are shit-hot pool players. We're really good. We, you know, we sink all the balls, the white ones. We don't care. (laughs) Sometimes we shoot them from our table to another table. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's extra points. Yep. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. Uh-huh. And if you get it, send them sailing far enough, that's oh. you win the game, yeah. right? Winning. And Bobby thought all of our shenanigans were hilarious. Yeah. So he's laughing and kicking in with us and having, having a great, great time. time. Bob, on the other hand, was pissed yep. that we weren't taking it seriously. And then was all up because we were playing teams. Annika and I were on team do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. And they were on team be serious and try to play the game right. Yeah. Which doesn't work well when you're playing with us. No. And so he then starts telling Bobby is like, well now to get this shot, you know, he's like telling him how to angle the pool. Yeah. And what, but I was Put like, it at a 45 degree minute. angle and bounce it off that corner. Yeah. When we talked about this in the car, you hate pool. You don't know how to play pool. Mm. And now you're, you know, and you Minnesota were touched by a lion. And you're trying, like, I don't get it. Right. And now you're trying to line up the shots and mm. tell him how to be a professional pool player. Uh huh. And the three of us, mm-hmm. me and you and Bobby, yep. laughed like fucking fools. I'm surprised we didn't irritate other people in the Honestly, pool. Honestly, yep. And shot pool balls every which way but loose. Yep. And <laughs> had an amazing time where poor little Grumpy was yep. like, We're, I hate it here. But they ended up winning because, you know, they played like the right way. I know. <laughs> what little losers. Yeah. Oh, God. We laughed so hard that day. Yeah. We did have some really good times. We had some great kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, there were some who I absolutely adore. Yeah. And would love to see again. And there's some who I pray I never see again. Yeah. I you know. know. I know. But, you know. But I do get a... But if you want to... You know, foster a child. Look into it because, some, like I said, it can be a really rewarding yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you get really great kids. I know that my cousin Jennifer is fostering right now, oh. and is fostering a little girl who is. It's great for them. Yeah. So well, and know. here's the thing: you you fostered teenage boys. That is different than fostering some other children. But I'm going to say this about that, and that's where we have to end this. Is and I know this is going to sound like I'm saying, well, boys do this and girls do this. But in my experience of foster children. Mm-hmm. So that's where you can, you know, go with this. Boys are dumb. Oh, mm-hmm. Because Most they regard. would pull some <laughs> shit and I would go to them and go, why did you break my record? Or whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah. And instead of going, well, wouldn't me, they'd be like, oh, sorry, that was an accident. I didn't mean to do that or whatever. Or, you know, why did you steal Annika's necklace? Oh, well, I, you know, thought I could get away with it. Whatever. Yeah. They would always fess up to uh-huh. whatever it was. Yeah. Now, we usually got our intel from Annika. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, but we were always, we never let on. No, 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 no. The, we only had a couple of girls. Girls deny it to the death. Because <laughs> I would go, um, excuse me, but why did you, you know, steal this thing? Or why did, why did you eat the last piece of cake when I said that was for me? For I didn't do it. I just saw you take it out of the fridge and eat it. Yeah. It wasn't me. Uh, you still have cake crumbs on your mouth. No, I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> you know, it's like, and literally it could be like, you're holding the evidence in your hand. Mm. And they're like, nope. Nope. Not me. This is a different cake. Deny it to the death. That shit's crazy to me. But the other thing that's funny to me about girls is, boys do this crazy. And again, this is just from my experience with foster care. Boys will fight with each other, be mad at each other, hate each other, and then they'll go punch it out, and then they're fine. Yeah. Then they're buddies again. Yeah, yeah. Which I don't understand, because if you punched me, I would hate you for the rest of your life. Mm-mm. Girls, on the other hand, will hold on to some shit, and it could be years later, but they're going to get revenge. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they're going to get their payback, and it could be like, well, in sixth grade... Yeah, yeah. 
you stole my favorite Lisa Frank folder. Right, right, right. You know, whatever. Yeah. And so that's why I just killed you your cat. broke. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Like, my oh. pickle, tickle me pink crayon when we were kindergartners. Yeah. But and now, now I, that's why I fucked your husband. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and now that's why I'm the stepmother to your children. Like, so there. Sure. Exactly. You will think again before you break someone's crayon. Oh my God. Who has time? I know. I don't care about it's anybody exhausting. that much. Uh, so, but now that we've kept you longer than we're supposed to, and whatever that means, I mean, it's our show. You're listening to want. it on your own time, so yeah. if we've made you late, you're stupid. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> pause. Go to work. <laughs> go do what you need, or don't go to work. We don't care. Yeah, I, I'm not an advocate for working. No, I don't dream of labor. No, Mm-mm. no, no. Nor anyway. Anyway, thanks for listening. Yeah, it's been and fun. And we, as usual. Had a great time talking to you. We did. And we'll be back next week. Uh, and, and if you'd like to send us any messages, mm-hmm. it would seem as though at gmail.com. Gmail. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And on that note, we got to get the fuck uh, out of okay, here. Okay, I love you. Bye. Bye. It would seem as though.